What's up, Low Tide Lamenters? I'm Quackers Co., and this is the fish fry for December 7th, being held at Gone Fission Hydro Plant. For our cooking utensils, we have the splat dooleys, the mini splatling, the H3 nozzle nose, and the Snipe Rider 5H. It's been a while since we've been on Gone Fission, so we need to remember how to play this map. On Marooner's Bay, we'll find ourselves there at the basket, trying to hold our ground, but at Gone Fission, we need to remember that that basket area is one of the most dangerous places to stay. Since the map extends in a wide array around the basket, we need to move around this whole map in order to find where everything is spawning from. And for how small this map is, it is incredibly paintable, so make sure you get the splat dooleys and the mini splatling on painting, because the H3 and the Snipe Rider have a little bit of an awkward fire rate. And go and practice activating turret mode with the splat dooleys when you're painting, that way you have a little bit more of a feel for how far that dodge roll is going to take you whenever you activate it. And the range on the H3 and the Snipe Rider is just a little bit short for reaching some of these stingers on the shoreline. So you're going to find yourselves pushing towards that shoreline, so make sure you get yourself back up to those platforms in order to maintain control of this map. On a high tide, the gameplay at Gone Vision doesn't really change that much. We just need to put a little bit more focus on lesser control, since we don't have anything that can cause a wide amount of damage to a large crowd. And remember that those Steel Eels are always a high priority target on Gone Vision. It doesn't matter what tide you're on but they become even more of a higher priority target once you're on a low tide. And our composition has some pretty good range, so don't forget to work those sides and keep that center lane clear. That bridge is key in order to keep control of this low tide map. And for those who are daring enough, whenever you see a slam and lid in that center lane, jump onto the sides and then jump onto that center bridge, activating the slam and lid. Just make sure you're landing in a favorable position. On a co-op charge, those splat dooleys should be running eggs. And as long as two other players are in the turrets, you should be able to clear it. And if you're in the turret, just be smart about your ink efficiency. If you're waiting too long for a flyfish to activate, or just sitting there at no ink, you could be spending that time getting your ink back, or firing just a couple shots in order to clear up some cohawks. During a glowfly's occurrence, we need to remember to use that corner platform to the left of the basket. Make sure you get the balls painted around those platforms. There's a good chance that there's going to be enemy ink that you're going to have to jump over, and those salmonids can boost you over to the next platform, and sometimes you can catch yourself on the side of the wall, prepare a squid surge, and get out of there. And if you have the mini splatling, just try to stay really aware of what your charge is doing and try to keep that thing firing as much as possible. During a griller's occurrence, that H3 and the Snipe Rider really need to focus on getting their shots to hit those grillers. Try to keep that Snipe Rider at a full charge as much as possible. Don't be hanging on to two shots when you can easily just charge it up to get all five. And try to put those splat dooleys on small fry control. It's going to be hard for that mini splatling player to keep up. As stated before, we don't have any weapon with incredible crowd control, so during a mudmouth occurrence, make sure you focus on getting those mudmouths taken out quickly and trying to do some lesser control. Our range on this composition is pretty good for a mothership occurrence. Just keep those splat dooleys and the mini splatling moving around the map, taking out chinooks and boxes, and try to post up with that H3 and the snipe rider and provide some long range control. All of these utensils can do a pretty good job on damaging that mothership on approach. For a giant tornado occurrence, the same rules about the mudmouth wave can be said. No serious crowd control with this composition, so make sure whenever those lessers start dropping from the sky, you get out of there and start dealing some damage to them. For Goldie Seek, we don't have any piercing weapons, so try not to get into anyone's aim. And those two valves on the taller platforms are kind of your key for this wave. If you hit one of them and it's high, you know it's going to be somewhere close to that exact one. But you could easily go over to the other side. Activate it, and you'll know that it's also close to that one on the higher platform. Since the salmonids that come up that small platform will just spill over and all the other ones have to go down the ramps, it wouldn't be too bad of an idea to activate those two since it does take them a while to get to the basket area. And those lessers are after you, so try to lure them into really favorable positions. So as we're here at Gone Fission, let's remember how dangerous that shoreline is and how bad it is to stun stuff right there by the shoreline when we could easily lure it to the basket. So let's get this map painted and get some solid control on it. Okay, let's get into the cookware. Our first cooking utensils are the splat dooleys. The splat dooleys have some of the best mid-range painting for any tool in the dooleys class. It also has one of the best increases on fire rate whenever you activate turret mode. 
and for this composition needing a lot more lesser control, that turret mode will be really helpful on controlling some of these corridors. That turret mode is also really helpful for making an approach onto a stinger and getting a quick splat on him so that way you can grab a couple eggs and get your way back. And one really helpful thing that you can do with the splat dualies if you use turret mode is if after you've splatted everything and you still have some ink left, just paint around you and get a little bit of extra ink on that turf. If you're trying to use the splat dualies as a boss slayer, remember to always get a little bit of extra height and distance against some of the lessers, that way nothing sneaks up on you. Our second cooking utensil is the mini splatling. The mini splatling charges up quick and it has a pretty good damage output with it. But just like with any other splatling, you have to play it just a little bit more defensively. If the splat dealers are doing a little bit more lesser control, you can try to focus the mini splatling on being more of a boss slayer, being in the right position to cause some massive damage to some cohawks, or to get there with the charge right when a steelhead is ready. The mini splatling's fire rate is also quick enough that if you climb on a fish stick, you can use the opposite camera rotation trick to take the fish stick out very quickly. And if you're pushing towards a stinger, remember to slightly move your aim upwards as you're taking out his pots. That can speed up taking out a stinger. Just try not to hold on to a charge for too long. This thing could always be painting or taking out some lessers. Our third cooking utensil is the H3 Nozzle Nose. The H3 Nozzle Nose has some incredible damage output as long as you can make all three shots hit from that burst. Once those shots are hitting, this utensil is an incredible boss slaying tool. It's also really good at causing some damage to those cohawks, making it a little bit easier to take them out whenever they're right there beside us. The H3 can also help out with crowd control as long as you move that aim across the enemies as you're firing. Cause as much damage with this weapon as possible, and like with the mini splatling, try not to linger too long without causing damage, or painting. This utensil could always be doing something really helpful and super supportive, especially if those splat duelers are getting down to the shoreline. Get up to those platforms and be that support character. And you want to be a little bit more supportive because we have the Snipe Rider, which gets us to our last cooking utensil, the Snipe Rider 5H. The Snipe Rider 5H can be one of the most strategic, boss slaying, supportive weapons in the entire meta. And one of the worst things that you can do with the Snipe Rider is to have the last few shots in it and you're just waiting for something to show up or to activate. It takes almost exactly two seconds to get the Snipe Rider to a full charge, giving you all five shots. If you're waiting longer than two seconds for something, then you missed out on a full charge. Get this thing to a full charge and try to fire all five of those shots. It's also got some pretty good paintability for a charger. So one helpful thing to do is to use those first couple of shots to give yourself a little bit of extra mobility and then start releasing some damage from your position. Move it to another position, charge it all the way up, and keep causing that damage. The charge shots also fire whenever you release your finger from the trigger. So it's helpful to hold your finger on the trigger and release it once you've honed in your aim. During an extra wave, those splat dualies and the mini splatling can do some really good constant damage onto that Kohozuna. The H3 and the Snipe Rider have that range and damage output to both support on lesser control and taking out bosses. Remember to extend only out into the shoreline to grab those eggs and then to bring them back to launch them at the Kohozuna. Don't forget to use that H3 and the Snipe Rider to also cause some damage to that Kohozuna. And as always, look for that moment right towards the beginning of the extra wave where you can use your special to not just cause some damage to the Kohozuna, but to take out some bosses, spawning some golden eggs early on in the wave. And the fish fry usually comes out before the stage rotation, so if you want to catch these updates when they're hot and fresh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want other fellow Grisco employees to receive these tips, make sure you like and share the video. Bye bye To give the fish fry an algorithm boost, just comment what your favorite or at least favorite weapon is of this composition. If it was the L3 nozzle nose, I'd give it to the L3, but I guess I'll have to give it to the splat dualies. That increase of DPS and fire rate whenever you activate turret mode is pretty exciting and can be extremely useful in this game. Alrighty, bye bye guys.